So you're working for an insurance agency, or maybe you're about to start working for an insurance agency, and you're asking yourself a major question. Am I going to be able to grow inside of this agency? Maybe I don't want to run my own business. Maybe you just don't want to go out and be independent and face the scars and the grueling that comes with that. Maybe you want to just partner up with a great organization, a great agency that has the, the culture and the pieces put together for you, but you're wondering, am I selling myself short? Is this the best thing for me? And can I grow and make an amazing, amazing career with this organization? Well, in this video, I'm going to answer those questions. I'm going to explain exactly what you need to do to be successful if you're working for an agency to grow inside the company instead of having to grow a company. Let's jump right in. This video is sponsored by none other than Lead Heroes, you guys. Lead Heroes has got you covered when it comes to telemarketed leads and virtual staffing. On the lead side, whether it be Medicare supplement leads, final expense leads, turning 65 leads, they just got something for everybody. They can also actually have you plug in with one of their virtual staff members on the staffing side to where you can pay by the hour for one of their trained and very well vetted staff members to help you out in your business in a virtual assistant format. Just because you watch this video, they're going to give you 10% off any order you make on their website. Link to the site can be found down in the description, so go ahead and check them out. The biggest misconception in business is that you need to be an entrepreneur or self-employed to be successful. What if I told you, right? Think about NBA owners, right? People that own teams in the National Basketball Association, right? One of the biggest sports leagues in the world, which I'm happen to be a huge fan of, right? I, I follow very closely. What if I told you that the most successful person, the, the, the richest NBA owner is not an entrepreneur and really never was? That would be Steve Ballmer, the owner of the Los Angeles Clippers, right? He is by far the wealthiest NBA owner that we have in the league today. And Steve Ballmer was never actually the person that founded a business. He was a person that grew in the ranks inside of Microsoft, and it was never actually the company that he founded. It was a company that Bill Gates founded. But Steve Ballmer was a very important person within Microsoft. And it's one day at some point, he was able to run it as CEO. But Steve Ballmer was never actually an entrepreneur. He just was he just took advantage of the right opportunity with the right company and he stands above a league full of entrepreneurs that own teams what if i told you that the second guy the third guy the fourth and the fifth guy of facebook made billions of dollars it's so possible if you find the right opportunity to take advantage of it and to thrive inside of an, or, of an organization and there's some people out there that would be far more successful working for the right organization and being a part of something special than trying to do something on their own. Not everybody is meant to be a one. It might sound glamorous, right? It might sound fun to be a one, but it's not always fun to be a one. What does the one in the company have to deal with? Well, the one faces pressure unlike anybody else. The one is responsible for everybody's payroll, making sure everybody gets paid. The one is responsible for growth, stock options, satisfying investors. The one is working around the clock for many, many years. The one is the one that puts all the risk up. Not the two, not the three, not the four, not the five. Now, of course, those people want the business to do well because then it solidifies their position, of course, and it makes more opportunity for them. However, it's not the same as if the one fails. If the one fails, that's most likely their livelihood. The one might have taken out a second mortgage on their house to pump into the business. The one might have taken out debt to make sure that the business can thrive. The one is the guy who has the most to lose. And that's what people don't talk about with entrepreneurship. They always say, like you hear these quotes about entrepreneurship, that being an entrepreneur is like jumping out of a plane and hoping that you can build, I think it's like build a parachute on the way down or something along those lines. I probably butchered it, but you guys get the point, right? It's risky. It is very risky. An overwhelming majority of businesses in the United States of America today fail. They do. It is what it is. And some people aren't meant to be business owners. Some people 
aren't meant to be the one. And that's okay. It's not a bad thing. To be a successful one, it takes a very, very specific type of individual. Now, people can learn that necessarily. They can be mentored by other people, but not everybody should be doing that. And there's a lot of people that are self-employed that are broke that shouldn't be self-employed. They just It's just not for them. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, if you're working for an agency you're about to be, how can you make sure that you're going to be successful in that organization? Well, the first thing you can do is don't be a pain in the ass to the company. If you are a... A, a liability, if you are a detriment, if you are the type of person that causes time to be wasted, if the, if, the, if the ownership group has to worry about you all the time, and they have to worry about if you're getting your job done, you're consistently underperforming, you're not doing what's asked of you, um, you can't handle simple tasks, then guess what? You're a liability. Not only can you not be a one, but you can't be a two, three, four, five, six, seven, because you can't be counted on right? You need to make sure that you are delivering, working, and overperforming expectations for your business that you work for. And if you do that, you will be seen as incredibly valuable. And if you are seen as incredibly valuable, what does that mean? Opportunities come available that allow you to move up, to grow, to make more money, to potentially be, have, be in charge of more responsibilities, to potentially be a leadership figure in that organization. I know people in our business, in the insurance business, that are number twos, and they make more than probably 99% of number ones in their own business because they are a driving force to help this business be successful. They're an asset and they're rewarded as such. One thing I've always told my own employees in my own office, in my own agency, is if you do your part to help the business grow, and you do your part to help us grow as an organization and drive more revenue, get more clients, get more business. If you do your part and help with that, it does not mean anything bad for you. What it means is the business grows, and as the business grows, what grows with it is opportunity. The opportunity that exists for everybody is grown. People can get pay raises, people can get bonuses, people can get promotions, different positions become available. Opportunity flourishes as a company flourishes. And everybody can win, everybody can eat, everybody can reap the benefits of this growth. And that's the mentality that people inside of an agency that do great, the Steve Ballmers of the world have, that a lot of people don't have. It's this toxic mentality that a lot of people have that if the business is doing well, the only person that wins is the owner. Not at all. Not at all. That could not be further from the truth. And if you're a valuable employee, a good business will reward you as such. A good business will recognize that. A good business will absolutely reward you for hard work and effort. But on the flip side, if you're a freaking pain in the ass, if you're a liability, you won't be rewarded and you might even be fired. You might not even be able to keep your position. And that is the reality of the world we live in. Now, does anybody profit more than the founder or the owner of the business? No, of course not. But why should anyone profit more than the founder or the owner? Like I, mentioned, like I explained earlier, the one is the person that's putting up all the risk, the capital, the financial responsibility, the 80 to 100 hour work weeks. They deserve more of a reward than anybody else. It, but it doesn't mean that rewards aren't available for all. It's a, it's a mentality of we instead of a mentality of I. You get by giving. And if you give your all and your best performance to a business, an agency that you're in, that you're a part of, find ways to make yourself valuable. Find ways to make yourself valuable, even if it's not in your job description. Find ways to go out of your way and make sure that you are bringing new business. Look at it almost like it is your business and you wanna help the business grow. Now, if you're doing all everything that I talked about in this video and you're not being rewarded as a result, 
then it might be time to find a new company. Not all opportunities are great ones. So I want to preface my comments by saying that. Make sure that the organization you're working with promotes and believes and, and really embraces the idea of growth, reward, and opportunity. And as long as you have that and you are an asset to the company, great things can happen to you and you don't have to be an entrepreneur. There's nothing wrong with being part of a larger dream, a larger vision and reaping the benefits as a result. Anyway, guys, I'd love to kind of hear your feedback about this. If you like this kind of video, do me a favor and drop a like. It helps us so much with the YouTube algorithm. So do me a favor if you like the video and give us that like on the video. Comment your thoughts down below. Make sure to subscribe if you like our content about growing your Medicare business and growing your insurance business. Also, if you also like this kind of content and you really want to blow up your business, make sure to attend the Six Figure Medicare Agent Summit. It's my two-day event in June here in Salt Lake City. Link to the site can be found down in the description in terms of what who the speakers are, what you can expect on the two-day event, what the dates are, and how you can get tickets. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Be great, and hope you guys explode this year.